So you may have realized that we didn't show uh, may perhaps the first method that you would have thought uh, for solving for these coefficients. So if you'll recall the general form of the equation that we're trying to solve, we see we have a naught uh, x, uh, well, it's a naught plus a1 uh, x plus a2 x squared plus dot 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 a n x uh, to the n, right? And so this is f n of x, right? And you say, well, we could have just written out the equations, right? Uh, we So we could say f1 of x. Uh, so let's say we're, we're just using the, we're doing a, a, a quadratic, okay? So we could say, well, f1 of x is equal to a0 plus uh, a1. Uh, and again, I don't want, I don't want f1 of x. I want rather f, f of f of x1, uh, f of x2, f of x3 uh, equals, equals, so a naught will be here on every one, plus a1, a1, uh, that will be x, uh, well, uh, maybe not x1. So we could say x1, x2, x3, but we could say x0, x1, x2 to use the same notation as we used before. So x0 uh, plus a2 uh, x squared, uh, x0 squared, and we're going to have x1 squared, and we're going to have x2 squared, whoops, x2 squared, a2, a2, x1, x2. All right, so here's our system of equations. And that's actually just a fully determined system. And so we could write that out as, um, so this is really just x to the 0. So that's 1, 1, 1. And then these terms here, the, the x's, so that's x0, x1, uh, x2. And then we go x naught squared, x one squared, x two squared, and then we have our a's a naught, a one, a two equals our uh, b. Well, we could we don't have to go. It's not b. We're not we're not calling it b. We're calling it um, f x naught, f x one, f x two. All right, so there, uh, we just have this matrix equation and we could just solve it. And that's what we would do if we just wanted these coefficients. Now, what's the problem here? Well, the problem here is that this matrix right here, it's actually called a Vandermon matrix. This matrix right here is ill-conditioned. So this problem is ill-conditioned. I mean, this is basically what we're going to have to do if we want those coefficients. But because this problem is ill-conditioned, it's actually preferable if we don't really have to know the coefficients, if we just have to know what the values are in between, it's actually just better if we'll use something like uh, a different interpolation method instead of uh, directly solving for the coefficients. So that's just a little bit of a caveat. But if we had high enough precision and we're not going a very high order, it's not it's not going to be that problem, that big of a problem. Um, it's just the further up we get, the worse it is. And 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 because I, I mentioned the general basis functions in the last section, uh, you should be able to see this. I, I I really think it's it's actually rather insightful to be able to see this. So let's just plot these things out between zero and one. So so let's say this is zero and this is one and this is. Uh, z y equals 0 and this is 1 and if we plot that out that is and we don't care what happens beyond okay this is uh, a, a x to the 0 okay um, yeah right 1 it's just 
No, that's not x to the 0. That's x to the 1. Uh, x to the 1. Okay, now we plot this out. We. This is our x squared. And then if we keep going, our x cubed actually looks something like that. And the thing that you find out is at least on this interval here, these things are basically collinear. These functions are basically collinear. And so that's why the polynomials are really a pretty lousy basis uh, to use as basis functions. That's why this system is ill-conditioned.